Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mental Architecture, Building the Mind One Moment at a Time, based off of my book, which is available for sale on Amazon. My name is Howard Blumenfeld, and today I'm going to talk about the fallacy of measurement. So if you've ever measured anything with a tape measure or anything else, you probably take it for granted, the units that you see on here. You just assume when you measure something out that it's going to be 12 inches or 50 inches, 10 feet, but measurement is something that's actually quite arbitrary and not as exact as it may seem. So I'd like to talk to you today about the kind of the history of measurement and how something that we use all the time like that can be easily manipulated and changed so that what we might consider to be a standard measurement might not be one at all. I wanted to start off by reading a quote from my book to describe just how imprecise measurement really is. So every physical object in existence is at best slightly irregular in its shape and composure compared to the preciseness and exactness predicted by mathematics. Every collection of sounds contains slight irregularities in tone, pitch, timing, and resonance. No two people pronounce the same word the same way, yet it is possible for them to understand each other correctly. Mathematics consists of seemingly perfect ideas of measurement, yet you cannot find any instances of this perfection in the world. Even some of the world's most technologically advanced atomic clocks cannot keep time entirely accurately, as they are off in some instances by about a nanosecond each month. So interestingly enough, the concept of measurement's been around a long time, pretty much ever since humans have been around. One of the first units of measurement that was invented was the cubit in ancient um, Egypt. And that was thought to be basically the length of somebody's forearm, which equates to about 18 to 21 inches. Now it makes a lot of sense that people would have used their own body for measurements because what other kind of reference would they have to compare to? And this, this practice of finding something common to reference to, um, something that you could easily you know, identify goes back a long ways. One of the most ancient measurements of weight was called the biqua. And that was basically thought to be the me a standard measurement of a unit of gold found in the Euphrates River. And that weighed about 12.81 to maybe 13 and a half grams. So that was used as a standard to comp compare other things against to determine how much something weighed. Trying to find a standard of measurement, a standard unit was so difficult and such a tedious thing that it often took an act of royalty to make it official. So King Louis XVI, for instance, um, used the measurement of, or kind of developed, is responsible for development of a, of a gram, equivalent to one cubic decimeter of water at four degrees Celsius. That seems kind of random. Turns out it is, and it's worked out quite well over the past few centuries. That didn't happen until the 18th century. And things got even weirder. Um, the ancient Romans used the measurement of about 5,040 grams of rice, uh, or grains of rice, and refer to that as a Libra. And then Britain adapted, adopted that standard of measurement, turning the Libra into the pound, which is where the LB for pound comes from. And these measurement units were essential for conducting trade and business. You couldn't really compare different quantities if you had no standard of measurement, but coming up with these standards of measurement was a very relative and often imprecise thing. So the 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 striving for precision was something that would take a long time to accomplish. One of the most ancient measurements for volume or, or liquid capacity is the drachma from ancient Greece, which is one eighth of a fluid ounce. And believe it or not, that word drachma actually comes from the word handful. So again, making a relationship back to the human body in some kind of way for units of measurement. Now coming back to King Louis, the 16th cubic decimeter, which was involved in the units of mass, was also used to come up with the liter, which is a unit of volume. And then from that, you go to the Latin word galleta, that comes from uh, the word for bucket. Again, something that was used in, during that time. And that word gallon came from galleta. So gallon is the standard English unit for volume. And so you can see how all of these standard units were developed from things that people were using or things on their body to help them compare different quantities. 
One of the most difficult and controversial things to measure, believe it or not, was time, the passage of time. It took a really long time, no pun intended, for time to be measured in any kind of meaningful way. The ancient Sumerians are often credited with developing the sundial, which was a very primitive form of a clock, but it wasn't until the Babylonians came along that we developed the modern system of time that we have now, consisting of you know minutes and seconds and hours and that sort of thing, basically based off of a base 60 number system. The reason why the Babylonians used the base 60 number system is because the number 60 divides into other numbers very nicely. And it's better than using like 58 or 57. So it was in fact an arbitrary choice to use 60. The Babylonians used multiples of 60 in other types of mathematics as well. If you think of the number of degree measurements in a circle, 360 degrees. So measurement in general has always been very controversial, but it's a necessary thing to have for a society to function in a civilized way. You can't have meaningful business transactions if people don't feel like the units that they're exchanging are fair. And so I see measurement as being very similar to laws. Laws are passed because a group of people or a civilization feels like they're necessary to kind of hold things together. And measurement is a lot like that too. And our standards of measurement change. For instance, atomic clocks use measurement schemes that are similar in some ways to what the Babylonians use. The Babylonians use an ancient water clock where water would come through at a regular rate to cause a dial on the clock to turn. And of course, over time, we've, you know, um, we've helped make these measurement devices more precise and more accurate. And the atomic clock is about as accurate as we can get, but even it has its flaws. So just as all objects are kind of not, it's not clear where an object necessarily begins and where it ends, the measurement is kind of the same, it's kind of very similar. And that's something I wanna talk about in my next video when I talk about uh, perspective. So uh, you can see that basically the fallacy of measurement is that when you measure something that it is necessarily perfectly accurate. Even this uh, measuring tape right here that we started off our video with is, has some inaccuracies to it. I guarantee it that the space that one and two are spaced apart is not exactly the same that the two and three are spaced apart, but the error in measurement is just so tiny that for practical purposes, who cares? And then another thing to kind of think about, and I'll talk about this stuff like this a little bit more another time, is if you were to try to measure something, there's a question of where do I measure it? So for instance, if I wanted to measure the length of this part of the chair, this arm, probably make the most sense to lay this measuring tape down on it straight and say, oh, that's about 10 inches but I could hold it up here and say, oh, it's about nine inches. So, you know, I could really press it down. It might change the measurements just slightly. So there's some relativity in, in measurements and who's to say where the correct place to conduct the measurement is. Just, it's just as arbitrary as saying what the measurement value is and what measuring device or measuring units to even use. So this is one of the oddities of mathematics. It gives us a way to measure things, but it's also imprecise and it's a human invention, just like anything else. But that doesn't mean that we should just give up measuring altogether. No, of course not. Measurements are very important. It just means that we should always be looking for ways to refine and make our measurement systems more accurate and more user-friendly. So thank you for joining me for another episode of Mental Architecture. I hope you had fun with measurements and measurement systems. Next week, I will discuss a matter of perspective. And so we're gonna look at how, kind of extend the discussion from this video into how things can look very different if you just look at them from another perspective. And that could be any kind of perspective from a visual perspective, or maybe just even the way you feel. Uh, so somebody who feels happy and somebody who doesn't feel happy may see the same thing in two different ways. So that's a pretty deep discussion. We'll be back with that next week. In the meantime, please like, comment, and subscribe below to my videos or watch other videos from earlier sections of this book. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a great night.